Christmas songs. Sometimes simple, sometimes complex, very often beautiful and inspiring. If you're someone who celebrates Christmas, and probably even if you aren't, there are melodies that you've heard throughout your entire life. But I wonder if you've ever thought about how they can help make your guitar solos sound better. I'm Charlie Long, and just in time for the holiday season, I'm going to give you three ways that playing these timeless melodies can make you a better guitar player and a better musician. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe, and let's get into it. First way that playing Christmas songs can help you with your soloing is by developing your ear. But to do this, I want you to actually play them by ear. We live in an amazing time where there's so much information available and we can look up a tab or we can watch a quick YouTube tutorial on how to play something, but I'll never be convinced that the learning that takes place when you do that is as deep as the learning you get when you teach yourself something. When you train yourself to hear something in your head and then find that melody instantly with your fingers on the fretboard, something really magical happens with your musicality. One of the greatest tips I can give you is to try to play everything you hear. The Christmas songs are no exception. A great exercise is to take a certain root note. Let's use our low E here and play through a bunch of songs by ear. You'll really start to get a recognition of intervals, which is the distance between two pitches, and that's what ear training is all about. Now, you might have to dig around a bit to find the right notes at first, but that's okay. You're literally learning and your brain is adjusting when you make mistakes. Let's play through the intervals in the key of E, get an idea of how they sound. Then we'll play through a few Christmas classics and get some recognition of the intervals they start on and maybe where they go from there. So here is our drone note, our E. Here is our octave. So it's the root. Here is the second. Minor third. Major third. Our fourth. Fifth. Sixth. Here's our flat seven. Major seven. And octave. So now that you've got a good idea what the intervals sound like, let's try to play through parts of these Christmas songs, see if we can't make some headway. Let's start with, for instance, Silent Night. Here's our root. If I play up the scale, I'm not going to embarrass myself by singing, but I'll play up the scale. Hmm, the fifth note. Fifth is the note that Silent Night starts on. If I'm listening in my head, hearing what I'm thinking is accurate, Deck the Halls also starts on the fifth. How about Jingle Bells? Well, the verse is also going to start on the fifth. The chorus, however, starts on the major third, so there's our major third. Here's an interesting one. The Christmas song, Chestnuts Roasting on an Open Fire. It jumps a full octave between the first and second note of the verse. That's an interesting interval. 
How about White Christmas? Starts on the major third. Got a few weird chromatic notes in there. Major third of the fourth, back to the major third. Flat third, third, fourth, flat fifth, fifth. That's an interesting one and a good little test for the ears. How about what child is this? It's actually got a minor sound to it. We're going to use the minor third, the root. Minor third, fourth, fifth. different than the major thirds that we've been hearing. How about Frosty the Snowman? Old Frosty also starts on the fifth. How about Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas? This is actually starts off, you've got the whole, the E major triad. Triad is the first, the third, the fifth. Come back down. Now we're going to play the first inversion of an E major triad. One of the things that I'm noticing, I hope you're noticing it now too, that these songs are made up of lots and lots of chord tones, literally the notes of the underlying chords. That's why they sound so melodic and so pleasant. Now that we've got some of these notes under our fingers and our ears are warmed up, let's move on to point number two. The second way learning and playing these songs can help us play better solos is that to make them sound really good, we have to add elements of phrasing to the notes that we play. Phrasing elements are the little techniques we add to notes like bends, like slides, and vibrato that make our guitar playing sound more musical or more like a singer. I've always admired guitarists that have the ability to make their playing sound vocal. It's a little easier if you're a horn player and you're literally breathing into your instrument, or of course if you're a singer. But as guitarists, we've got the task of making a plank of wood with some wire stretched across it sound like a living thing sound like our musical voice. Let's explore how we can add some simple phrasing to bring a melody to life. Let's take the melody from the song, Oh Holy Night, one of my favorites. Uh, we're gonna be in the key of E. And let's play it with no phrasing at all. Now, I can recognize that as the melody of O Holy Night, but it doesn't sound very good. So how can we make it more vocal and expressive? First, let's add vibrato to the notes. Not every note, but any note that we wanna have a more vocal quality. And let's pay attention to the speed and intensity of the vibrato. You want it to have a relationship to the song that you're playing. It should match the mood and the dynamics and complement what's going on, not overpower it. The other thing that I think you should pay attention to and really work on is delaying your vibrato. You'll hear great singers that will hit a note and they kind of let the note breathe and grow and then they add vibrato to it as they go and the vibrato can even build and it's, it's an amazingly expressive technique. So let's play through this again and just to add a little bit of vibrato. Sounding better already. Next, let's add some slides. Sliding around is a, another technique that I really like. And, and if you listen to great singers, 
very seldom will you hear them just nail a pitch exactly. They'll usually move into it from above or below. They, they add some sort of nuance to the pitch. We want to try and do that with our guitar playing, and slides are a great way to do it. So let's add some slides into our melody here. So now we have vibrato and slides, and it's really starting to come together, it's starting to sound like it's got a little life to it. Now, if we were to mix in some bends with slides and vibrato and try to put together all those pieces, I think we could make this melody really sing. Let's give it a shot. A third way that Christmas songs can help you play better guitar solos is by challenging you and helping you grow your creativity. These are pretty simple melodies. Some of these songs are hundreds of years old. They might be presented in ways that you think are outdated or boring. And while there's something to be said for respecting traditions, music has never stood still. What can you bring to one of these songs that is uniquely you? Whether it's your phrasing, adapting a song to your style of playing, whatever it is, challenge yourself to come up with something that makes the song your own. Some Christmas songs have fairly complex chord changes. Can you solo through those and nail them all? It could be something as small as the natural harmonics I played at the end of Silent Night in the intro to this video. Just something a little different that I heard in my head and I wanted to add. I did an instrumental version of Old Holy Night a few years ago, and I played a pretty aggressive solo in it. And it was funny because people that weren't guitar players would listen to it, and up to the solo they'd be nodding their heads and smiling, and then when the solo started, they looked like they just smelled something rotten. But you know, that's okay, because I liked it. It's what I was hearing in my head, and hey, it was my recording. It was me. And I was able to get it out through my hands. And that's why we play, right? Thanks for watching this video. Pick up your guitar, work through some of these classic melodies, work on your phrasing. Don't drink too much holiday punch. I wish you a wonderful holiday season and a very happy, healthy, music-filled new year.